What's up, gang? Brad Bodnerchuk here with a brand new podcast. I'm literally settling in and getting comfortable as I'm here to discuss leadership and dissect it in every single way that I know how. I'm really looking forward to bringing more guests onto the show. That's how I originally launched my podcast in 2018 was very much guest focused. And then admittedly, I got away from that as I was, I guess, finding my voice for lack of a better term, but I'm really, really intrigued to bring on other leaders, other leadership coaches, other executives to really one, learn more to be completely honest and also give you all a different taste, um, a different paradigm, if you will, to listen to, to learn from. And I, I, again, I reflect back on the podcasts that I did that were strictly guest focused and oh my gosh, I learned an absolute ton. So I'm looking forward to that. And if you're listening to this right now and you know someone or you know of someone that you think would be a great collaboration or a great podcast guest for me, I would be more than happy for you to send me a direct message and say, Hey, have you ever thought about reaching out to so-and-so? And then I will definitely do that. Today, I wanted to hop on and talk about talking. It's something that I do probably too much, to be honest, and maybe one of the reasons why I have a podcast. But what I mean when I say talking, and as it pertains to leadership, is this idea of trust. And I witnessed this, and I was inspired to come on and talk about this right now, because of our kids. Now our kids right now are three and five, our kids swimming lessons. And generally, what I'll say in situations like this is stay with me here. But our kids are on summer vacation, whatever that means when you're three and five. They're on summer vacation and we've enrolled them in essentially everything we can enroll them in without bankrupting ourselves. And one of the things we've enrolled them in is swim lessons. And they've been in swim lessons throughout the spring and it's a beast of its own. But they really, really lucked out in the instructor that they had for the indoor lessons that we were in over the spring in that she was really attentive, she was sensitive to the kids and their levels and comfort levels and all those things. And they probably had a total of, I say, six to eight lessons with this instructor. But over those lessons, they really built a rapport with this person and, and they really did build, as my daughter would say, a trust jar and they filled the trust jar up with this person. Now, that person wasn't going to be instructing the outdoor lessons, the summer lessons. So this is a two-week program that they're in, and day one was Monday. And it was such a different experience on Monday. Our son, Cole, who's three, wouldn't even get in the water, and it was what it was. We didn't push. We didn't you know, say, hey, we've paid for this, so get in the water. It was just, hey, whenever you're ready, whenever your body feels ready, you get in the water. And Lena, our daughter, who's five, definitely was challenged in the water and was at times crying. She never got out, which was incredible. And I want to just put this out there right now that Lena, if you're listening to this at a later date, mom and dad are so proud of you and how brave you are and how brave you've been in the last couple of weeks, especially at swimming on Monday night. It was a brand new coach. It's an outdoor pool. A lot is changing. It's a whole different environment. But the biggest thing for me was the coach. Now, I'm not here to say that they weren't great at what they were doing. They obviously have their way of coaching and I wasn't there to coach them. It was the instructor, the swim instructor. I'm not a swim instructor. But what encouraged me or what inspired me to come on here and actually talk about this long form was what actually happened last night. So Tuesday night, their second night of swimming, we walked to the pool and we looked in the pool, in the kids' pool, and there was the instructor, the instructor from the spring lessons, the instructor that they had for six or eight lessons that they built this rapport with. Right away, I'll be honest, I felt excited because I thought they were so good with the kids, and I could see how excited the kids were, and I could see what was happening in that moment, or at least my interpretation of it was, they felt safe. They felt a higher level of trust. They felt like their trust jar with this person, which makes total sense, was fuller than it was with this new coach. And again, not saying this new coach wasn't doing a great job. It's just they didn't have the time yet. They hadn't spent that time. So there wasn't that implicit trust built. 
And the experience last night compared to Monday was just completely different. Our daughter, who on Monday was crying in the pool, still brave, but crying in the pool, was now putting up her hand to go first through all the new skills. She was jumping up and down in the pool. She was literally vibrating. She was so excited. And I think, again, because she accessed this level of trust, she accessed this level of safety that she had built with this other instructor. And our son as well. He was in the water. He was more comfortable, basically. I mean, the fact that he went in the pool was a massive win. And what I was sitting there thinking as I was watching this is leaders need to talk more to their team. Leaders need to be a part of the onboarding process. Leaders just need to be seen. Leaders need to be around. Leaders need to be part of as much as they possibly can be a part of. And I'm inspired to share this with my clients. I'm inspired to share this story with all of you as well, because it's such an easy thing to implement. All I'm asking for us to do, and myself included, in the relationships, in the areas where we want to connect with people more and we want to help them feel more trust or a high level of trust, they, we want them to feel safe, sometimes it just takes time. And let's be realistic here. How much time did this springtime instructor invest with our children? She saw them at maximum eight times for a half hour increment. I'm not great at math, but that's one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours total, four hours total that our kids were exposed to this instructor. And it seemed like with four hours of exposure over months, I'm talking months, they built this high level of trust, but also this level of excitement as well. So what does that mean for us in the leadership world? Or what does it mean for us in leadership roles or even me as a coach this is like very intriguing psychological information that we can leverage, we can use to our benefit. And what it means is we should be taking time to just be with our people, taking time to just be seen, taking time to have conversations, taking time to maybe not uh, consciously, but unconsciously taking time to make deposits into that trust jar letting them know, hey, I see you, hey, I appreciate you, hey, you matter, hey, great job on X. And it's not always about even that. It's about, you know, having tough conversations, about being realistic at times. It's about, you know, discussing everything. But that is, that's, the, sorry, the key word there is discussing everything. So when you have an opportunity as a leader in any role, it's only going to benefit you to take that time to have that conversation, to expose those people to you as a leader, let them know how you think, let them know how you feel, let them know the vision, all of these things. And it's going to end up, I would argue, 99% of the time, it's going to end up in you facilitating a feeling within your people like our kids felt at their second outdoor summertime swim lesson, which was almost this massive level of like surrendering. They just felt like they could just be kids again and have fun in the pool and explore. And that's what they're there to do. They're there to get more comfortable in the water. That's the ultimate MO. And all it took was this other instructor to spend time. And do I believe that if the other instructor is there tonight or tomorrow night and the next night, and then they build up the same level of trust, Will the kids have the same experience? Absolutely. Understanding that it just takes time. So if you're looking to have a more engaged team, if you're looking to have a team that trusts you and your vision more, what is the mathematical equation? It's time. It's simply time. So I've talked about this, I know for a fact on this podcast before and likely numerous times. It's just, when are you doing this? Where is it showing up in your schedule? Who is in your org chart or on your org chart? And at what times are you reaching out to them? And what does that conversation look like? Is it simply stopping by their office in the morning, knocking on the door and saying, hey, as you have your coffee and making the rounds? Or is it something a little bit more formal? I think there's room for both, especially in 2023. I think we really should be looking at these informal interactions and using those as an opportunity to build that level of trust. 
And then I also think the idea, not the idea, but the practice of instituting more formal interactions also allows for that. So with, again, using our kids and their swimming lessons, those are very formal interactions, right? Those informal ones were the ones outside of the pool before the lessons or after the lessons where the kids got to understand, okay, who is this person? Can I trust them to what level? All of those things. And that's what we should be working towards as leaders. That's what I am now really intrigued to work towards as a coach with my clients is I know, Hey, this just takes time. So when I have a strategy session with someone and we've been speaking for 15 minutes, it's silly for me to think that right away, you know, they all of a sudden have this high level of implicit trust. It takes time. And I think one of the keys that help you get there a little bit quicker, we talked about it last week, was vulnerability. Just showing up vulnerable. Being human is going to allow for them to see you for who you are and perhaps save you a bunch of time. And as far as I know the conversations that I'm hearing from the leaders that I work with, time is an extremely valuable thing. And it really is to all of us. But especially someone who's in a CEO or executive role, you really need to be protecting your time and be stingy with your time. So if it means, hey, I know that I should be spending over a quarter, um, over the over a quarter in regards to a fiscal year, I should be spending a total of, I know Patrick Lencioni talks about it in his book, uh, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. He talks about eight days equivalent of time of eight days over 90 days is what you should spend with your team. So break that down, figure out when those days, when those times are and watch what happens. Like I say, often do these things and just watch what happens. So that's it for me today is to share with you what was just so loud to me in that moment. And really, this is how I work. This is kind of an inside look at how my brain works is I'm constantly scanning the outside world, which can be a little bit tiring, to be honest, I'm constantly scanning the outside world and seeing how this is all intertwined, how the level of trust that my kids had in that pool last night is exactly what I'm looking to facilitate with clients and what I want for them to have with their teams. And when we have that, it really allows us to go to so many beautiful places. So the plan of action that I want to leave you with on today's podcast is hold space, make time and talk to your team. Let them know who you are, but also seek to learn who they are, right? Ask the questions, not yes or no questions. Ask questions that are leading. Don't ask them, you know, <laughs> questions about the weather. That's just surface and it's boring. Go a little bit deeper, spend that time. And it's only going to pay dividends throughout your year. And I, say this to my clients quite often, and I'll say it here is it's things like this that I truly do believe end up on the bottom line at the end of the year. You can actually see these things. They may not have a price tag to them as you work through the year. There might not be that automatic ROI, the return on the investment of time. But I promise you, if you do this, if you make this a priority, your world will be completely different uh, for yourself and also for your entire working team. So that's it for me today. It's all about talking. It's all about talking more to your team. It's all about spending time. And again, if it isn't for our team, what do we have? If it's we, <laughs> how important are your people basically is what I'm asking you. And how important is it for you to have a relationship with them that is high on the level of trust? I would say if it isn't, you should need to make it a high priority moving forward. So your plan of action, make time, talk and build that level of trust. As my daughter says, fill that trust jar up. I want to say thank you so much for uh, listening to the podcast, for supporting the podcast. If you could, it would mean the world to me. If you left us, me, a review, again, it's just how the analytics for these things work. The more reviews we get, the broader audience sees it. And I would love for this message to hit more people as I do believe it matters. If you also feel like this podcast would land with someone else, they would enjoy it. It would mean the absolute world to me if you would share it with them and let them know about what we're doing over here at the Brad Bodner Truck Podcast. I always say we, but it's just me right now. Literally me, a microphone and camera, and there's a light here, and I'll do all the editing and stuff. But hey, one day, you never know. Big team. Let's see. Uh, that's it. Have an incredible day. Seek growth. Be good and do good. Peace.